So I am Kate Norum with Sports as a Job, and this is what I'm going to be calling the the roundup, where I basically talk to you, media professionals and everything in between. So today we have Chris Kirshner, and just tell us a little bit about what you do and all that. Yeah, so I cover the Hawks for the Athletic. I, I've been with with the Athletic for two seasons now. Uh, prior to that, prior to that, I was with um, a place called SEC Country. SEC Country sh- shut down actually um, in 2016. I was there for three years. I was covering Alabama recruiting. Um, so my job there was to uh, call as many high school kids as possible, asking them where they were going to go to school. Uh, it's definitely a pain just because uh, high school kids are you know, most of the time it's a pain. And for my job, it, it was difficult though, because, you know, you would talk to a recruit and the recruit could talk to you and tell you com- something completely different. And then fans are like, you know, what, who's, who's actually telling the truth here? So that was definitely a, a tough part. So, um, so yeah, I, I did that for three years. And then prior to that, um, I was with another, so SEC Country was part of a Cox Media Group and I was with another Cox Media company um, right out of school. I was mainly doing like aggregation. So it wasn't like something I, I wanted to do, but it gave me the opportunity to move to Atlanta out of school. Um, went to University of Florida, studied journalism there. Um, so I just took that job mainly because again, it, it was, in Atlanta, I didn't have to go to a, a small city in the middle of nowhere, um, and that didn't really sound appealing to me. So that's the route I took. Um, I also freelance for NBA TV as well. I, I uh, do some video editing for them. So um, I've, I've been with NBA TV since 2014, which is when I moved to Atlanta. So how did this whole journey begin in sports? Um, you're talking from like the absolute like beginning. Yeah, like, like the absolute child. beginning. Uh, there's my dog. Oh, um, so I grew up in the Bronx. Um, lived there until um 2000, so I was eight years old. And um, you know, New York City has uh, she, she's right next to me. Um, so New York City has obviously all the sports you could want. Um, you know, with me growing up in the Bronx, Yankee Stadium is uh, just a few miles from where I grew up. So, you know, my dad and I would go to as many Yankee games as possible. Um, and, you know, I played baseball since, until uh, I was a senior in high school. Wasn't good enough to end up going to, to play college. But, um, yeah, I mean, sports has just always been a passion of mine. Um, I probably thought that sports reporting was going to be my future career path when I was in eighth grade. So eighth grade, um, I think I was taking algebra two at that point and I wanted to work for NASA. And I was like, there's no way I could work for NASA because, you know, math is starting to include shapes, letters, uh, circumferences <laughs> like I, it was just too difficult for me so I couldn't like I, I just said no nah, like I, I can't do this so I always was a good writer I always like reading growing up um, I always like sports so sports plus writing sports writing so that's how I decided that sports writing was going to be my path that's honestly probably one of the best reasons to go into a field that you want to go into because you're like I like this I don't like that so I'm kind of the same way honestly (laughs) so throughout your whole journey what has been some of like the best pieces of advice that someone has given you and what has like stayed with you throughout this whole process I would probably say just working as hard as you possibly can just because again like you're not only competing against your classmates for jobs um you're competing against people who so i went to florida so you're competing against people who are 
um, going to school in Washington or Maine or where, wherever it is. Like you're, you have to think about that when you're applying for jobs. Like you're not just, you know, mm-hmm. having to deal with the, you know, 50 or so people who you graduate with in journalism school. Like you have to, you know, compete with everybody. So when I was in school, um, you know, I actually did TV for the um, campus television station. I thought that that was what I wanted to do. Um, and I had a couple offers to do TV coming out of school, but um, I didn't realize that uh, you could probably make more money at McDonald's than you can starting off in local television. Um, my two offers were $19,000 and $21,000. Oh. So, um that's difficult and those two um, places were in the middle of nowhere so um you know it's it's tough you have to realize that if journalism well journalism in general news sports crime whatever um you, you have to um believe that this is something that you are passionate about because if you're not passionate about it you're really not going to like this job because there's really no such thing as an, an off day. Um, you know, July 4th, normally, like, there would be sports going on. Or Christmas Day, for, for me, like, I, I, with me covering the NBA, there's basketball games on. So you have to realize that just because your friends might be working 9 to 5, Monday through Friday, um, you know, there are going to be some times where you just can't go out with them because you have to work the next day. or you know, when you want to go out, they're probably working or having to, you know, prepare for work the following day. So it's just tough. Like you have to, um, you know, the one thing that I, I definitely um, learned from just people who were in the business before I got into it is that, you know, you have to be passionate about this because one, you're probably not going to make that much money, out of, especially out of school. And two, you have to be um, very cognizant of the fact that, again, there's no such thing really as an off day. It's insane how much you have to put into something. I mean, if you really want to go after it, like, there should be no stopping you, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so on that note, like, how have you managed to just keep on going? Like, what has just kept you continuing on your path? Yeah, I mean, it's just passion. Um, you know, I, I love what I do. I like, I love telling stories about uh, people. Um, I love going to games. I love traveling the country for free, getting paid to do so. Um, I mean, in my last job, I got to go to Hawaii because I covered Alabama and, and Tua Tonga Milo was the quarterback for Alabama. So, um, you know, I got to go to Hawaii for seven days. Um, you know, like there's definitely some great parts about this job for sure. Like it's, um, you know, it's not just all work. Um, I, I I think that what just keeps me motivated and, and keeps me in the business is just the fact that, um, you know, again, it's I'm passionate about it. I've wanted to do this again since I was eighth grade. Um, so you said you've covered games from you've covered NBA, you've covered SEC. What has been one of the most memorable games that you have covered um there are probably two in my opinion so um the alabama georgia national championship here in atlanta um you know i was on the field for that so um you know when alabama won in overtime when two or three the pass to Devontae smith on the sideline um that was, you know, an incredible game. Um, I, I, should, I should say three games. Um, and I think it was either two years prior to that um, when Clemson, Deshaun Watson found Hunter Renfro in the corner of the end zone for, again, the last second touchdown. Clemson wins the national championship. I was at that game. And then um, when Tiger Woods won the tour championship a couple of years ago um, here in Atlanta, I was covering it. I was actually – on the 18th hole when the fans rushed and was, were walking behind Tiger. Like, that's – those are probably the three most memorable games that, I, that I've been at. I mean, games, but golf is a tournament. But um, those were probably, like, the three most memorable sporting events that I've been to so far. 
Wow, that's amazing. It's it's like the beauty of just being in that moment. Thank you once again for coming on. Yeah, no problem. No problem at all.